Welcome everyone this morning. I'm just looking around and I'm just blown away. I'll be in tears in a minute, I think, so bear with me. Um, just thank you. On behalf of the Bar Medman ANZAC Committee, I extend a warm welcome to you all today to share in our scenery of Gallipoli ANZAC service. It is a pleasure to welcome a Flight Lieutenant Danielle Burrows and her staff from RAF Base Wagga. We really appreciate having the Cataflight party again. Thank you. A special welcome to all the families who have returned today to honour their relatives, some travelling from as far away as New Zealand, Victoria and Queensland. When we received notification that we had been awarded an ANZAC grant, which I hadn't really expected to receive, I went into panic mode and thought, I, what am I going to, to do now? I'm going to have to do something about the ideas I've submitted. After writing a par for the Bar Medman News asking for photographs and memorabilia, John Regan contacted me and sometime later Di Hartwig, Nick Kelly, phoned and after that things just snowballed. It's just so gratifying to see so many families who have returned to share in this service today. There are 122 names of men and one woman, Dr Annie Robertson, listed on the cenotaph all of whom saw active service overseas, and of these, 26 were killed in action, some families losing more than one member, and I am sure that they would be both humble and proud to see you return today and wonder what on earth all the fuss was about. I had a, a phone call uh, six o'clock last night from Kenny Love at the, um, the uh, Air Museum in Tamora, and around about uh, 11.15 or 11.20, we are going to have um, three planes fly over, a tiger moth, a Ryan and a piper, and then about a quarter past 12, a Wirraway will fly over. So uh, we will pause as they fly over so you can all, including me, um, can have a look at the, the planes flying over. Kenny did also ask me, they requested that I read the following, uh, to the, the uh, service today. Uh, today's fly past of the Ryan, Tiger Moth and Piper Cub is provided by the Tamora Aviation Museum to honour the service and sacrifice of all men and women who served our country during conflict and times of peace. In particular, we pay tribute to the courage of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we can enjoy the freedom and way of life this great nation offers. I hope you will bear with me as I thank a number of people who have helped make today's service a special one. Again, a big thank you to our Piper Angus for leading the march, to Alicia Cummins for bringing in her riderless horse, Smoochie, to represent those who didn't return, along with Jo Lawrence and Alicia Prentice of Australian stock, on Australian Stock Horses, representing the Australian Stock Horse Society and the Whaler Association. Thank you also to Gina and her Australian Shepherd Phantom, dogs still playing a big part in the field of war. Thank you to all the children who have marched and will take part in the service this morning. Thank you too to the relatives of the servicemen and the members of the public who joined the march today. A special thank you to the staff and pupils from Bar Medman Public School who made more of their wreaths to decorate the fence and for making a special effort to participate in the centenary of ANZAC competition. To the children from Area Park Central School, Tamora Public School and Tamora High School who participated in the competition, a very big thank you also. Thank you to our judges, Blanchire Councillor Liz McGlynn and Tamora RSL sub-branch President Terry Goody. 
They were most impressed with the quality of the entries and found it very difficult to make a final decision. Thank you Austin Moore for renewing and organising our music. The original tape had been put together many years ago by Mrs Pat Ryle but unfortunately had reached its use by date. Austin, with his expertise, has updated to a CD will now be much clearer. Thank you, Austin. As many of you are aware, the honour board made and donated by Mr W Collier in memory of his three sons and all local service personnel was going to be moved into the bowling club. After much consideration for reasons of preservation, it was decided to leave the board along with other memorabilia in the hallway between the bowling club and the community hall. With thanks to the Veterans Affairs Anzac Centenary Local Grants Program, we were approved a grant for $1,500, which has enabled us to have a copy of the original older board and have restored First World War memorabilia, which will be displayed in the bowling club along with photographs, letters and postcards, which will be on permanent display and unveiled prior to lunch today. I sincerely think of all those relatives who took the time to photocopy or reproduce copies of their photographs, letters and cards to be displayed. To the bowling club committee and members for giving us permission to use the space to display these items where they can be viewed at any time. To Anthony Irvine Signs Tomorrow for coming up with the idea of the smaller version of the board which still retains a local connection as local girl Ashton Taylor was very much involved in the designing con and construction of the board. <coughs> to Moments in Time Custom Framers Tomorrow for the wonderful job they have done framing and producing many of the photos and to everyone who helped hang the display, especially Diane and Keith, a much bigger job than anticipated but well worth the effort. Thank you also to Mika Electrical, Electrical for the spotlight to highlight the original honour board which will be switched on whenever there is a function at the bowling club or community hall. To Nick for painting the hallway at such short notice and hanging World War I items that have been hidden away for so many years. It looks fantastic. I hope that many of you will come over to the bowling club to view the memorial after the service. To Blanshire Parks and Gardens for trimming back the shrubs in, the, in our memorial park and tidying up Queen Street in general. As with any function of this nature, there are so many people behind the scenes who do so much to ensure that everything runs smoothly. You all know who you are and a very big thank you to all of you for helping to make today so special. And last but not least, my husband Colin for putting up with the papers and photos all over the office and the dining room table for the last couple of months. If I wasn't on the computer, I was on the phone but he has become very adept at hanging out the washing and washing the dinner dishes, so it's all good. Thank you all for attending. Uh, uh, it's just wonderful. I just can't believe it. Uh, I'll now, it's now my pleasure to hand over to Braden Taylor, who will leave the service for, for you today. Thank you, Braden. We're assembled here to commemorate that immortal day when the young men of Australia by their deeds and sacrifice, demonstrated to the world at Gallipoli that Australia was truly a nation. The sons and daughters of Ian Zaks came forward without question, accepted gladly and discharged fully their responsibilities during World War II, Korea, Malaya, Borneo and Vietnam conflicts. On this day we remember the sacrifice of such men for an ideal, for a way of life. Let us take strength in the knowledge and hope that our sons and daughters will never forget the examples set by their forefathers. In our everyday life, let us endeavour to carry on those traditions established in past wars and conflicts at such tragic cost. We think of every man, woman and child who in those crucial years died so that the lights of freedom and humanity might continue to shine. We nurture to the obligation of showing gratitude for the peace we enjoy and the responsibility of ensuring that the freedom and liberty so costly won is not lost by our own indifference. So let us mourn with pride, but let us also remember with equal pride those who served and still live. See that ye hold fast the heritage we leave you. Yea, and teach your children that never in the coming centuries may their hearts fail or their hands grow weak. 
please join together in singing the recessional. Thanksgiving. We thank thee, O Heavenly Father, for the efforts being made by the nations of the world in seeking peace and happier relations with each other. We praise thee for the spirit in men and women which made them scorn the way of safety and venture all for the common cause of freedom and right. All great and noble acts, known and unknown, which we believe by the mercy of God, will bring about the final conquest of the forces of evil, which burden the peace and security of the world. <coughs> the prayer for the Queen will be read by Kindra Baikwa. Almighty God, who rules over the kingdoms of the earth, bless your servant Queen Elizabeth and be pleased to bestow upon her the blessings of divine wisdom and grace that under her nation may be wisely directed to take its rightful place in the wider life of the world. Tom Lawrence will offer the prayer for the nation. Almighty God, watch over those serving in the armed forces and those who still suffer disabilities through sickness or injuries suffered in war. Strengthen and encourage those who have been saddened by the loss of loved ones, especially children deprived of father's care and protection. Grant that the same courage on and resolution, the same comradeship and service shown in the last great struggle in which our country was involved may now be offered in greater task of making a true and lasting peace. Let us sing together, lead kindly life. <coughs>
I now invite Polite Lieutenant Danielle Burrows to present the commemoration address. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good morning. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all, personally and on behalf of Raf Base Wagga and its senior ADF officer, F officer Group Captain Jones, for inviting us to share in your Anzac Day commemoration. Anzac Day means many things to each and every one of us, but as I spoke with various people about today, I noted a common theme. A time to remember those who gave their lives so selflessly for the nation and their beliefs. Today we commemorate the birth of a national spirit which occurred at Anzac Cove on this day a hundred years ago. We do not celebrate or glorify war, nor do we merely remember one horrendous battle. Today, we remember the men and women who did not come home and what they and their comrades in arms achieved. We celebrate the victory that is the spirit of Anzac with this national day to reflect on a common experience that has been shared by so many Australians and the price that has been paid by them for our current way of life. In the adversity of the harsh Australian bush, with its isolation, <laughs> floods, droughts and bushfires, there was born a people with quiet resolution, tenacious, fiercely independent and tempered with a sense of mateship and hospitality beyond the comprehension of many other cultures. This was, and still is, a breeding ground for men and women who rally to the call in times of national crisis. Almost an entire generation of young men and women volunteered for service in the First World War. One in, every, one in every five of them died on the battlefields of Turkey, Palestine, France or Belgium. Of the remainder, more than a third were wounded or returned home with lifelong disabilities. Out of this tragedy came deeds of heroism and self-sacrifice, which are now part of Australian folklore. The Gallipoli campaign was one of many fought and has become renowned because it saw the first fighting by Australian and New Zealand soldiers, known as Anzacs, in an international war. The Gallipoli campaign itself was a disaster. During the eight months on the peninsula, 7,600 Australians and 2,500 New Zealanders were killed or mortally wounded. It was arguably the first great test of Australia as a nation and was a tragedy which cost the lives of those fighting for an empire whose existence was then considered essential to Australia's survival and identity. The spirit of Anzac, born at Gallipoli, found maturity in the various campaigns of World War I and Australian servicemen and women continued those fine traditional qualities of courage, self-sacrifice and comradeship through World War II, the Korean War, the Malaya Emergency, the Vietnam War and the Gulf War. The spirit of Anzac continues today. We have seen the way Australians have banded together to help victims of natural disaster in our own country and abroad. And our servicemen and women are serving around the world to try and provide a better place to live for many other nations. Today, we salute those who paid the supreme sacrifice pay tribute to them, thank them, and in doing so, celebrate the victory of the spirit of Anzac. It behoves us all to ensure that this, this spirit continues to be part of Australian legend. I know that through your dedication and commitment, it will continue to be cherished and remembered, and our young people will come to understand the price that has been paid for the freedom we now enjoy, lest we forget. <coughs> thank you, Flight Lieutenant Burrows. Mr Collier will read the commemoration of the fallen. O oh Lord, through the mouth of your prophet, you declare that all souls are yours. We thank you for the brave and fearful dead who willingly lay down their lives on the battlefield of war or succumb to the perils of the deep or of the air. We bless you for the dauntless courage of those defenders of our commonwealth who have fallen in the cause of truth and righteousness. In your hands, O oh Father, we leave their departed spirits. Grant us to follow their good example in faithfulness and endurance, even unto death, that we may with them be found worthy of the crown of everlasting life. John Lawrence will read the names of the fallen, all wars. Paul of First World War, J. Black, L. P. Collier, W. Burke, H. Davis, G. A. Dale, J. W. Neal, E. H. Groves, O. Goodlad, 
A.E. Harris, P. Kelly Military Medal, R.D. Leeson, M. Marr, L. Robertson, E. Robertson, W.H. Rymont, A. Robbins, H.H. H. Smith, E. Schultz, H. White, A. White, J.T. War, M.A. McKenzie, L.F. Murphy, P.S. Smith, Second World War, H.E. Wilmot, A.J. Blunden, B.E. Graham, C.J. Green, N.J. O'Connor, E.B. Roll, S.F. Stanmore, R.B. Tabor, and J.D. Whitby. When you go home, tell them of us and say, here tomorrow, we gave out today. Dale Maitland will now read a letter written by Lance Corporal W. Burke to Mr. Len Maitland, which was published in the Tamora Independent on Saturday the 24th of July, 1915. This will be followed by Mr. Kevin Collier reading a letter written by Driver J. Petty to Mr. L. Collier of Farm Edmund. We are busy smashing the Turks about just at present, so I am not allowed to write too much, and anyhow, I have not the time. I have just been relieved of, from my post for a few hours, and I am seated in a dugout in the firing line writing this note. We landed here just a month ago under pretty heavy fire, and had a bayonet charge straight away, driving the Turks back like rats, and since then we have not been out of action. They attacked us the other night and we moved them down, we mowed them down like rabbits. We let them come right up to the trenches and then opened with rapid fire at five yards and skittle them. What was left of them threw their gear away and ran for their lives, but very few got back. Ollie Goodlad, Joe Walton and Huey Campbell are here now. It is, great, it is a great thing to see to be in a bayonet charge, especially as they will run from us. Our chaps are wonderfully brave, and some have been mentioned for orders. Remember me to all the family and the boys, and say I've been lucky so far. A letter received since the same writer contains the sad news of death of a wee good lad. Uh, a letter from Driver J. Pretty to Mr. L. Collier. I suppose you read about the fighting at the Dardanelles. It was pretty thick for a while. Our brigade is very lucky, only a few casualties. I would like to describe it to you, but I can't. Anyway, it was terrible. We played right into this. When I left, our guns were pumping it into the turns, and they didn't like it, but gave them their rights. They are pretty game. But they don't like the cold steel and run. I never saw anything that could catch them when they get going. We are holding a line about two miles right opposite the Narrows. And we got a few of Shinak fort shells into us and went very close to our transports. They are pretty poor gunners. They could have played havoc with their guns one night. They got the right they got the range to a T swept the beach, but we were too quick for them. Our guns got them and blew them to pieces. Then they brought up more guns and we let them get into position, then talk about a scatter that were all over the place. You ought to be here, it's great fun. I was talking to Bill Burke on the beach the other day, he's all right, so is Ollie Boxall. I saw him in the trenches just before the charge. I guess he was all right. We came back to Egypt last week and are going back to the trenches again. It's a very monotonous, it's very monotonous here after being at the real game, but we must go where we are sent. The casualties are pretty heavy. So are the Turks, twice as much. Ella Lawrence and Olivia Gorham will call the names for the laying of the wreaths. Ralph Bass, Forest Hill, 
RSO all wars killed in action. Legacy by Medmen Police. Mr. William Henry Collier, Chairman of the Initial Memorial Committee that Established the Soldiers Memorial Park and Sons Lawrence Peter Collier killed in action. Horace Collier taken prisoner of war and William Henry Collier wounded in action. Thank you. 
Red Cross, Presbyterian Church, St. John's Anglican Church, St. Joseph's Catholic Church, Edmund Primary School, St. Anne's Tamara, Tamara High School. Edmund Community Centre, Farm Edmund Fire Brigade, Farm Edmund Development Association. Farm Edmund Modified Tractor Pool, Farm Edmund Ladies Bowling Club, <coughs> Farm Edmund Men's Bowling Club. Farm Edmund Show Society, New South Wales Farmers Association, Farm Edmund Tidy Towns. Farm Edmund Mingle Pool, Farm Edmund Tennis Association, Farm Edmund Basketball Association. If there is anyone else who would like to place flowers on the cenotaph, please come forward now. The last post will be followed by the reciting of the ode. 
and one minute silence. They shall grow old, not old, as we that are left grow old. They shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. I'll invite Ryan and Laura to come forward. A reading from St. John, chapter 15, verse <coughs> 13. No greater love has any man than to lay down his life for another.
remember also those who have served and returned and for those presently serving in the armed forces. We will now present the prizes for the INZAC competition. <coughs> Olivia Cushieri can come forward to receive her prize for the Kinder to Year 2 section, which will be presented by Mrs. Diane Hartley. That is Olivia's winning entry um, here near the microphone. Stephanie Eccles will read the winning entry in the Year 3 to Year 6 division, which was won by Hunter Clare. Jude Stanley Campbell, a policeman from Barmetman, joined the 1st Light Horse Regiment on the 2nd of September 1914. He was 28 years of age. His love of horses led him to train them and was then able to go to war using this ability. He found horses around the soldiers made them feel better. He went with three of his best horses and only two horses were badly injured. The third horse had a sore leg, but Sergeant Campbell was never going to give up on his horses and the horses won't give up on him either. He was very brave. He left his five other horses back with his wife and children in Barmedman in 1914. His wife was devastated when he, when he left. His three kids cried their hearts out. The horses that were with him were all different. The horse that had the sore leg was a stock horse named Caramel. The other two horses he had were wall Wallers named Hero and Cookie. Gallipoli was harsh on the horses as they had to deal with gunfire, mud and a metre deep and barbed wire. The horses were there at Gallipoli with Sergeant Campbell to help bring the wounded soldiers from the battlefields. To the nurses at the hospitals made of canvas. My time here at Gallipoli has taught me a lot about war, death and the human spirit. I really do hope that the people I am fighting for appreciate what myself and my horses have done. Um, I now invite John Regan to come and present Hunter's Prize.
Isabel Spark will read the secondary winning entry by Stephanie Eccles. Skinny was a 31-year-old single man who was born in Marangaroo, New South Wales in 1884 and came to Barmabin to work as a farmer. Sydney joined the Australian Imperial Forces on 6 of Ju July 1916 in Sydney, New South Wales. He began with the rank of private on enlistment in 24th Battalion, 17th Re Reinforcement, <coughs> Regimental number 6118. Sydney was 5 foot 7, 3, 4, three quarters of an inch, weighed 132 pounds, medium complexion, blue eyes and brown hair. The war began because of Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated, assassinated by a Serbian in June 1914. A month later, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. Germany, Russia and France joined the conflict. In August, Germany declares war on Russia and France. On 4th of August 1914, Britain declares war on Germany. Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa and India, as part of the British Empire, joined Britain in war. In September, Australia's first fight in the war was to overpower German soldiers and destroy their wireless station in the war <coughs> New Guinea. In December 1914, Germany became the first Zeppelin raids on England. There were 50 Zeppelin raids over three years, to the depth toll never passed 1,500. The bombing caused panic and hurt morale. Philip sailed from, sailed from Sydney, New South Wales, on transport AA Argyllshire on 31st of October 1916. At 11am on the 11th of November 1918, the war officially ends with German and Allied forces signed. A ceasefire in Compagne, France. Sydney returned on 3rd of March 1918 and discharged on 17th of April 1918. Medically unfit, medals received British, British War Medal and Victoria Medal. Sydney died on 18th of October 1947. I'll invite Mr. Keith Maitland to come forward to uh, present Stephanie with a prize. Congratulations to our winners, and now I invite all entrants in the competition to come forward to receive a certificate of participation from Flight Lieutenant Burrows from the RAF base in Wagga. Michelle Rogers. Andrew Gustafson. Helen Walker. Gregory Bagrinov. <laughs> Chloe Eccles. <laughs> Hayley 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 Hay
highly acoustic. Xavier Kushiri. <laughs> Tyson Kushiri. <laughs> Jacob Manali. <laughs> Olivia Gorham. <laughs> Tiana McKay. <laughs> Ella Lawrence. To conclude our service, I ask you to join in the singing of the national anthem, followed by Gold Save the Queen.
Thank you everyone. That's the end of our today's service. Um, it's been wonderful. Thank you for all the children taking part and everyone else as well. Um, we would like to get some photographs, so if all the children will stay here until we get some photographs and anyone else is welcome. And hopefully we'll see most of you back at the club. Thank you again. Oh, the left. Oh, she's the left. Oh, the left. Oh, she's 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 the left. Oh, she